Let's mm, try. And welcome back to Sinestro Plays Chrono Trigger. Uh, yeah, we're in the Diadario Mountains or whatever. Whoops, or whatever they're called. Yeah, then then the Dario Mountains. Three hundred gold. Whatever. That's fine. Let's. Uh, wow, I actually got past that without them causing a commotion. I actually want to fight these guys though. Why can't I do that? There we go. That was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be. And once again, we need stuff to, uh, we need magic to kill these things. Although as an added bonus, if you find one with a mallet, oh crap, I'm, my, my uh, stuff is really low. I didn't even remember to replenish after that fight. Oh well. When you have a uh, one of those goblins with a a mallet, you will always want to use um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, fire on them because it'll light the mallet on fire. They'll have to toss it away. It's a surefire way to uh, even the odds a bit against those guys because those guys can be pretty tough. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. Hey, it's the hero. It's Tata. One of the few times you see him in this game. And we've got the co comedic relief music, which means... Yeah, that this kid is in way over his head. Yay. Two tech points. <laughs> whoop de doo Ah, there we go. Dude with a mallet. Let's skip Chrono's turn. I'm sorry, Drunk's turn. Ooh, that was no good. Yeah, I'm an idiot. I forgot to uh, stay at an inn or something. See, he's protected by that. Now, not so much anymore. Bada bing, bada boom. <coughs> anyway. My girlfriend is watching Bob's Burgers in the other room, so if you hear Tina, or, you know, a lot of yelling and screaming, then that's why. <laughs> that is, like, I was not sold on that show at first. Like, people kept telling me to watch it, and it's really great, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, eh, what I would see, yet another, you know, yet another animated TV show, family, you know, based on a family or whatever, but it's actually a lot better than I thought it was. <clears throat> um, it's, it's really, it's not social commentary like The Simpsons or like Family Guy or any, hey, <laughs> it's like trying to wake up my dog in the morning. Hey, no fair. But yeah, um, Bob's Burgers is just a real simple comedy. It's It, it doesn't do a lot of, uh, you know, like, ooh, it's the president of blah, 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 you know, like, uh, you know, political stuff or anything. Like, nothing even remotely close to that. It's it's just basic, you know, old school comedy. It's very, very funny. Um, although the more recent stuff, it, you can tell the show is kind of running out of steam just a little bit. But, you know, it's centered around the same five characters, the two parents and the three kids, and then you got your complementary characters that kind of fill out the universe, the show's universe, rather, and it's it's really funny. Like, it's laugh-out-loud funny at times. And it's just a pleasant show to watch. Like, it's really, it's one of those shows where once you're familiar with it, <clears throat> it's, it's nice to just have on as, like, comfort food, so to speak, once you're familiar with it, because it's the same familiar characters. It's very, very well voice acted. It's, a uh, John H. Benjamin, or is it H. John Benjamin? I forget. But it's the same guy as Archer. Um, and it's got, um, oh, I'll never remember her name. Uh, who does Louise. And the guy who does Tina is, is very, very funny. He's a stand-up comic um, full-time, so he's he's great. And, uh, yeah, it's a really good show. It's, it's much better than I ever would have thought going into it. I had a lot of people, like, giving me the... I always hate that. It always, it always like, builds up unnecessary hype towards a show. Like, oh, you have to watch it. Or, you know, a lot of people like that that I know are, <clears throat> are like that about books, too. Like, oh, you have to read it. You have to dedicate 12 hours of your life to reading this 4,000-page book. And it's like, 
Nah, I don't think I will. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mostly read stuff for fun. I don't read, I used to read like challenging, you know, like Dostoevsky and shit like that. And, and um, you know, cause it's, it's really interesting to read stuff like The Idiot or Crime and Punishment. Because that guy, the author Dostoevsky, is really, really, um, and especially the translation, of course, to English. Um, but that guy is like a slice out of another world. The way he writes, it, it, he's so pinpoint and it's, it's very professionally written. You know, there's not a lot of flowery, like John Updike type stuff going on. He's just telling it like it is. He's getting his point across. I mean, granted, he uses a lot of words to and a lot of examples to do that, and that's fine. But I'm I'm saying like he has a point to make, and he very thoroughly makes it. <laughs> it's just, he's I like that. I like uh, that approach a lot. Um, like the idiot is a very interesting book because it's about this guy who grew up in a very affluent family, um, but was diagnosed with epilepsy at a young age and um, was sent away to Switzerland to like a medical clinic away from his family so he could be treated properly. And then he wasn't able to leave until he was like 18 or 19 or something like that. So in the meantime, his family is very rich and they're part of this like high society, high culture. So he comes back to meet his family um, in Russia, in Moscow, and he's, he does not fit in at all. Ooh, gold helm, that's good. He does not fit in at all. Um, yeah, might as well. And he's to the point where he's, like, seen as, like, the, you know, it's, it's the same sort of idea as the Simpsons episode where Mr. Burns finds out, he finds out he has a son, and it's voiced by Rodney Dangerfield, and, um, yeah, he just doesn't fit in with that crowd. And it's meant to be a social commentary of how ridiculous that crowd is, how, how high society is. So it's it, it's very it's it's kind of, it can be work to read books like that at times because it's so lab the writing is very labor it's very it's professional, but it's very labored. So it's not easy, but it is you f you really feel like you've accomplished something after you've finished reading those books, which is what I like. Um Another author I really like is, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dave Eggers is one of my all-time favorites. <clears throat> um, he, uh, wrote the first book of his I wrote was that memoir he did about his dying mother, who I forget what disease she had, but that dude is a very matter-of-fact, like, he writes, like, the way people talk, um, very simple, but he's also, I don't know, I don't know how to describe authors very well, and that's not something I'm very good at, but, um, he's a very straightforward, you know, he's, he's a bit easier to read, but one of his books that I read that really changed my perspective on stuff was, uh, that I yeah, read right after it came out was, ca it's called What is the What, and it's about the Lost Boys of Sudan, Look at this dipshit throwing rocks at us. What are you, 12 years old? Fuck you. What an asshole. But yeah, What is the What is about this guy's trek through. It kind of goes back and forth between his experiences um, adjusting to life in America after having grown up in Sudan. And um, also uh, the uh, what it was like growing up as one of the lost boys of one of the orphaned kids in, as part of, he was orphaned as part of the uh, Sudanese Civil War I'm just gonna heal Chrono there we go so it goes back and forth between the two between like this it's like really cleverly structured because it goes t it goes on about like the trouble he's having in what kind of damage does this do oh it does enough okay you don't have to waste magic like that okay never mind I wonder if I even have to waste magic on those other guys, or if I'm just going about this the wrong way. Whatever, I gotta, I'm just rambling about books I've read like a pretentious asshole anyway. But, um, the, uh, yeah, that's a very, very, that book, yeah, see, it's just fucking, screw these guys, you don't have to use magic against these dudes. It does help, though. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, the um, that book, it's called What is the What? I forget the guy's name, unfortunately. It's been over 10 years since I've read it, but very, very good. It had a huge effect on me. Um, the first book I read, I can remember reading as a kid, um, I was probably 17, that really had a... T wow, look at this. So the first book I remember reading, it was called. It was a guy named uh, Richard Bach who wrote it. Not to be confused with Richard Bachman, which was one of Stephen King's uh, pseudonyms. Not to be confused with that guy. Here, I'm not gonna use Magic for Chrono anymore. That's stupid. Um, Richard Bachman was. Uh, oh, or no, I'm sorry. Richard Bach wrote this book called Illusions, and I was probably 17 when I wrote it. Or when I wrote it. When I read it. And that's one of those books that, like, changes your perception of, you know, like, of life, of death, of what happens after you die, how little we actually know as humans. Oh, that's right, the game shuffles you on this, like, convoy of enemies. This is kind of annoying. You don't really get a chance to, uh, do a whole lot here. To do much healing unless it's in battle, which kind of sucks. Let's throw some ice at this guy. Um, but yeah, no, I that that book is is kind of like meant. You, that's one of those like catcher in the not catcher in the rye type books in terms of subject, but it's like one of those books you read at a young age that like kind of alters your way of uh, thinking about stuff. Especially when you grow up in the suburbs and you're you're the whole point of the suburbs is to live in a very sheltered, protected organized way it's like everything is you know everything is all protected there's nothing you have to worry about if you want to go shopping you go shopping in this specific area and all that sort of stuff but um what am I talking about I, I'm so tired and I'm yeah I'm just out of it a bit so I'm gonna ramble for a bit <laughs> I was talking about that book illusions <coughs> excuse me so, um, no, that's, that, that, if there happen to be any teenagers watching this, I highly recommend that book. If you read it now, it's like, it's, it doesn't have nearly the same impact as it would if you were, a, if you were a young person. That's one of my favorites, though. Another guy I really liked to read was, um, David Foster Wallace, but only to a certain extent, because, um, he is so... I wouldn't call him crazy, but he's, uh, his brain is so full of stuff. It's almost like his brain is like a bucket of water and it's completely full and the, what results on, on the page is like just the water spilling over. Like that guy has like, he's one of those like people, all right, I learned cure. That's very useful. All right. Am I done with this gauntlet? Jesus. Let's heal. Um, he's one of those guys that, like, thinks of every possibility for every possible scenario. He thinks of stuff you never would have thought of. He thinks of... The guy is just, like, almost overwhelming to read. And he's... He's very, very, very smart to a fault. So, um... But his, his books are a little tough to read. Like, Infinite Jest. Like, Infinite Jest. Like, the... The joke is on you, basically. The joke is on you, the reader, because that book is so over the top, and it's basically just that dude spilling his brain all over the page. <laughs> like, that dude, like, this needs to come out of me some way, somehow, because it's got to go somewhere, because I'm a freaking... Oh, no, not chaos. I hate that. Well, at least it's moral. Somebody with a low attack, and probably won't have to worry about it anyway, so... This isn't one of those JRPGs where the status ailment sticks with you, thankfully. The game's a little more streamlined. You're not stuck that way forever. See, now, is this frozen? Or is this meant to be just, like, puddle water? I, ne I never got that. Is this supposed to be, like, a frozen... Can I... Whoa! Can I play hockey out here, or what? All right, where I go this way, right? Yeah, I almost fell down there. Damn. All right, fuck you, dude. 
Hey, you shut up, you get lost. Fuck you. What an asshole. Now we fight him? What a dick. Alright, um... No, but David Foster Wallace's, um, essays, where he's forced to be focused on one subject, <laughs> are really good. If His novels are all over the place, and drift and drift, and are just in a million places at once, and in order to explain, and he, if you've ever even opened one of his books, you see all the footnotes he has, it's a little absurd. Oh, nice, I learned some new stuff. Fire Sword, Ice Sword, yes, that is awesome. Oh, I can't wait to show off Ice Sword. It's the best. Thing is, though, is... Oh, another mid-ether. That's right, I got a ton of mid-ethers, too, in addition to regular ethers. Uh-oh. These assholes. At least we can just spam them with physical attacks and take them out that way. No, but, uh, of course, uh, the most well-known... Um, what do you call it, uh, essay from David Foster Wallace is probably the one he did about Roger Federer because um, and it's it's written from a place of intimate knowledge because um, David Foster Wallace at one point was a nationally ranked tennis player. Oh, I like this guy. Mountains are nice. This is a life. Mountains are nice. And you're nosy. Hey, take this. Kind of a uh, what do you call it, a uh, earthbound thing going on there where you talk to that guy in the hotel a million times and he gives you some money finally i can't believe i gave chrono trigger that one or chrono chrono trigger i can't believe i gave chrono that one uh this is useful i gave chrono that one magic tab i'm still upset about that very irritating no but david foster wallace has also done essays on um there's one collection he has that i have called uh consider the lobster and he talks there's the very first one in that I think it's the first one he um, he followed the John McCain campaign of two th presidential campaign of 2000 to get to the Republic Republican nominee and it just goes into awesome detail about the kind of underhanded shit that uh, George W did to um, can I do here? I need to get will Fire Sword get rid of his uh, thing? Oh, none of these guys have it. Okay, never mind. Um, let's just do Ice Sword then, because that's my favorite. Yeah, buddy! Oh man, look at that damage. That is so awesome. Let's try Napalm, see what that does. That's just a grenade, right? Yep. <laughs> Oh, I love the spells in this game. It's fantastic. Meanwhile, these dudes are doing like five damage. Whatever. Huh. I just wanted to show those off. That is awesome. And Fire Sword, too. Gotta do that one. I won't waste it on these losers. Hey. Where's the other guy? What? You just- it's just- oh shit. Wow. I'm- I'm sorry I asked. Now, I'm curious if I do Fire Sword, if that will have the same effect. Damn, that's cool looking. Ah, it does. Excellent. Alright, let's use Ice to get rid of this guy. Well, as far as books go, I usually like to read a lot of nonfiction, though. Um, I'm one of those people that learns by example, so I like reading, like, Walter Isaacson is one of my favorite biographers. He does all sorts of stuff from uh, Benjamin Franklin to uh, Albert Einstein. A lot of really good stuff from him. So, does this guy have a thing? I can't even tell if he does or not. I think he does. Is that what sticking out over there. God, now we got the furnace going. We got Bob's Burgers blaring in the other room. The dogs are pacing around impatiently. Yeah, he did have something. I just couldn't quite see it. All right, let's finish this guy off. Yay. All right. But yeah, 
going back to Bob's Burgers, it is a very funny show, and I recommend it. Um, I think it's funny how some of the best shows, if I had to come up with, like, hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Just a kid lost in a cave. He's the wind. Just ask him. Wow. Look at that sword. It's the master sword. What's it doing here? It's supposed to be in the lost woods. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Wait a second, okay? It's funny to me, though, how um, so many shows that I enjoy now are animated. That never would have been the case 20 years ago when I was a kid. Like, there was The Simpsons, and that was it. Everything else was, like, Saturday morning cartoons. And those were good for what they were. But now it's like, you got Futurama, you got Rick and Morty, you got, you know... Uh, Bob's Burgers, you still have the Simpsons, Simpsons are still on the air, I don't like the Simpsons anymore, but, oh shit. So now we've got both Masa and Mune, and one of them accepts physical damage, and one of them accepts magic damage, so let's concentrate on the one, I can't, I honestly can't remember. Let's just concentrate on the one. Or is it both of them? I don't know. Let's try an Ice Sword. And this guy. Uh-oh. Is she going to be confused? Let's use a heal. Yep. She's useful, so... Heal her ass. Okay, let's try it again. See what this does. If it'll heal him or what. All right, that did reasonable an amount of damage. 500, Jesus Christ. Concentrate on the one. Oh, nice, yeah, you only have to kill one of them. Doesn't matter. I was overthinking it. <laughs> I like how happy they are, like bouncing around. This is cool. Masa's bravery. Mune's knowledge. Mune, Mune. I always said Mune when I was a kid because, you know, I grew up in America and the, the whole silent E thing and all that sort of thing. Oh shit, we got our first taste of the ultimate boss music. Listen to that theme. That is some fucking boss music. I mean, Jesus Christ. They must have had so much fun writing the music for this game. Like, that is so gloriously over the top and crazy sounding. Alright, I think I want to, um... Give out some mid tonics here, especially tomorrow. Uh oh, we got confusion for a drunk. Should have wait. Or is that a? Oh, that's a damage causing spell. Never mind. Now yeah, let's just do a physical attack. Uh oh, storing tornado energy. We'd better. Shit, we gotta get him. All right, everybody set except. Yeah, we're just gonna go with mid tonics for now. Um, let's hit him with one more ice sword. Uh oh. Are we too late? No, we're not. Ah, fuck you. Going after Chrono. Don't pick on Chrono. Yeah, this gives out big time damage, so let's have. Yeah, we're in the triple digits there. But at least this guy. Could Kinda lays off. No, 82. Shit. Um, give him some napalm. This one you can afford to be a little more aggressive. Uh, he's not ruthless. He gives a lot of cues. Let's do a fire sword this time. I'll heal myself here. Fire sword's pretty. I like I like ice sword better personally. Shit, I'm running low on MP for Chrono. That's no good. 
Let's give him, let's hook him up with a mid ether. Quit picking on Chrono! <laughs> Pain. Sounds like me on a Sunday morning. Pain. I want pain. All right. Here come. Oh wow! That was quick. Okay. I must be a little overwhelmed. A little over leveled. So there we have it. 500 experience points. 10 tech points. Marl's level up. Luca's level up. Excellent. Well done, Chrono and. Marl and Luca. We beat him. <laughs> that was fun, getting our ass kicked. Will they find us an owner and fix us? They are the spirit of the sword. And we have to fix it. We have to fix the sword, which of course we already know a famous swordsman. Now we need to find somebody to wield the sword. And spoiler alert, it is not Chrono. I mean, you'd think it'd be Chrono, first time playing through this. It's been broken for ages. We got the broken Masamune. It's not even, doesn't even have a hilt to it. And this game cleverly allows you to go all the way back down this way. So you don't have to fucking go through the damn dungeon again. I forget what game makes you do that. A lot of games make you do that. Super Nintendo games. I think the first Lufia game. Or uh, Breath of Fire, I think, makes you do that. Ugh, such a pain in the ass. All right, if we go back to Tata's, well, I need to hit the market here. What's up? Oh, shut up. All right, you got uh, some revives I can... Oh, I've got six of them now. How did that happen? That's goofy. You must have got them from random battles. Okay, uh, let's... Rest up at the inn, I guess. That's fine. Fifty bucks. An inn with three beds, and they're all the same room. And we get a brief glimpse at the all three sprites that are their resting. Uh, Oh, shut up. <laughs> You're one of those people. All right, anyway, let's go down to Tata's place. I bet he's, uh, I bet he, wonder if he managed to find his way back to his family. Hey, there he is. <laughs> Dropped it in the cafe. Aw. Ah, eh, go easy on the kid. He's just a kid. <laughs> All right, we got the same stuff. Let's see what Grandpa has to say about this uh, latest development. <laughs> I love the ha 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 at the end, like uproarious laughter. You guys still seeing the same shit? Yep. Okay. Anybody else in here? Nope. Let's get out of here. All right. So that includes that uh, concludes that particular thing. You know what? I forgot to go meet Toma in the cafe. That was a strange monster. Oh, I already uh, talked about that. All right. So we're getting reaction from people that uh, they're finding out Tato is a fake. But who's the real hero? We have a hero badge. Gosh, I wonder who it could be. I bet it's uh, Luca's dad. Yeah, I bet. You go back to the year 1000, give it to Luca. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just being stupid. Hey, she still wants to marry Tata. That's some commitment. Tata put her, better put a ring on that one. She still likes him, even though he's a fraud. Hey, what do we have over here? We have... Cursed woods, eh? Hmm. Some good shit over here. And a lot of weird looking stuff. Let's uh, fight them for fun.
Oh, you can't one-shot these things. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you keep going after the snake. And he'll uh, kill these dudes for to preserve himself. That's a clever idea. There we go. <laughs> it's crazy how they think of to do this stuff. Like, I would never think of something like that in my life. But there you go. All right. 78 from those guys. Jeez. Shelter, useful. All right, I don't want to fight any of you guys. Fuck you guys. You guys are boring. Hey. Nobody's home. Magic scarf. We already have one of those, I believe. Yes, we do. Hey, wait a minute. Frog was hiding in the ceiling. Sure, let's quote-unquote practice our sword play. Uh-huh. Uh, but guess what we have? Hey, bitch face. Ha! Liar. Melchior. We know that guy. Is that how you say his name? Melchior? Melchior? So he's busy uh, wallowing in self-pity, which is what he does best. So let's get out of here. And let's find Melchior. See if he can fix this uh, sword of destiny or whatever. Ha! Managed to dodge those guys. And save you, the viewer, your precious time. So, where do we find... We're still in 600 AD. And we're still uh, traversing through time with... Uh, if you want, you can go back to the Zenon Bridge, which is kind of interesting. Ha! Ah. That's right, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> Stop saying the same thing, damn it. Okay, so. Melchior. We go back to 1000 AD. We know how to do that. We just go to Truce Canyon. Let's fight these guys again for old time's sake. Uh, oh my god, come on. Really? Anyway, what else is there to ramble about? There's books, there's movies. I have not seen a movie in a really long time. And about 80% of you are going to either laugh or groan or roll your eyes at me, but I still have not seen the new Star Wars movies. I have not seen Force Awakens. I have not seen Rogue One. I have not seen the newest one. I kind of just don't care anymore. Like, it's been kind of beaten out of me at this point. Um, I really loved the Star Wars movies, the original. I'm talking Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi as a kid. I just don't... that Those kind of stayed there at that point. And when, I remember um, skipping school to go see Phantom Menace. And I w stumbled out of there, like, dazed. Like, what did I just watch? That wasn't Star Wars. Like, that was awful. So, yeah, that was a really awful experience. So, I kind of just gave up on Star Wars after that. No, we don't want to go there. We want to go to 1000 AD. In fact, um, yeah, that's the only place to go is in this guy's closet, right? No, I'm just kind of done with Star Wars. I don't really have any interest in seeing those anymore. So I just... I don't care. <laughs> I don't know. I the older I get, the more I like Star Trek. Like I like Deep Space Nine. I know you can like you're allowed to like both. Of course you're allowed. You're allowed to like whatever you want. But I've it's not an either or thing. I'm just saying like I like uh, Next Generation and Deep Space Nine and all that stuff a lot more. I think it's a lot more just interesting and fun. Star Wars is just I don't know. I associate that with being a kid. I'd rather just watch the original movies. How did I get it? How did I get it? 
I def hey, we get our first glimpse of the 12,000 BC music. Nah, I don't want to hear it. So, it's a big fetch quest. Alright, I've already got that, already got that, already got that, already got that. So, it's a big fetch quest, but it's at least... Listen, I'm gonna defend Chrono Trigger till the end of time. You're ultimately just, like, bounding through time. Granted, it's cool, there's the novelty of that, but you're also, um... Uh, yeah, you, ultimately you are just kind of like, oh, go talk to this guy over here, go talk to this guy. Oops, is this the right one? No, it's not. Hey, let me back in. Oh, there we go. Like, oh, you got to grab this to fix this, and then this to do this, to do this, and go to here and here. But it's ultimately it's how the story is told. Maybe this guy knows a thing or two about the redstone. Yes. Prehistoric era. Well, conveniently, we have a prehistoric thing right here. So let's go find some of that stone, shall we? Wow. Uh-oh. It's Wily e. Coyote. <laughs> it's a big pratfall. Wow, this is unexpected. These guys respond to mostly magic. If we did antipode, yeah, that'll work better. Oh, I know in spin cut too. Forgot I should show that off just for fun. Motherfucker. What other spells have I learned that I, I've skipped over because I was busy rambling about books and movies and such? Oops. Uh, Fire Whirl, I've known that for a while. Do you know anything new? No. Do you know anything new? No. I'm just kind of sloppy when it comes to this stuff. Let's just physical attack this guy to death. Whew, boy, I'm running out of gas here. I'm so tired. 360 from those guys. And a pedal. What do you do with a pedal, I wonder? We were outnumbered before. We can still keep fighting these guys. It's called grinding, okay? Hey, who's that? She's got a tail. Let's see? She chased off a couple of them. Let's uh, do Anapode one more time. Oops, wrong character. All right, let's get all these motherfuckers. Oh. All right, we got all four of them. Sometimes one will just drift out, just barely out of range. P pisses me off. Bada bing, bada boom. Efficiency. Hey. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. They killed him with Antipode. Um, let's just keep her as Isla. Get away from her drunk. Ha. <laughs> A little social commentary from... Granted, that's kind of... Unfortunately, it is timeless social commentary, but... <laughs> get it? Timeless Chrono Trigger? Wah, wah, wah. But anyway... Yeah, why wouldn't you just go to the village, Luca? Come on.
Berserker. I already got one of those. I don't need any more. You saw episode two of this. You know that Berserker's a bad idea. Well, it's not that bad of an idea. It's... There we go. Here, let's just physical attack the rest of these. This should take these guys out, I hope. Is Chrono strong enough? No, he's not. Shit. This is gonna take a while. Luckily, these guys all... Come on, show me the... There we go. This will hopefully kill him off, right? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Damn it. How did I used to take care of these guys? I can't do antipode on everything. There, I should take care of that guy, right? No. Jeez, man. Three Cyclone? Yeah, that's pretty freaking weak for Cyclone. There's got to be something else I can use. Ooh, a horn. But my level's up. I think these are also, um, if you rely on magic here, let's just do the basic bitch magic. That should do a little more damage. I would think, anyway. Man, I am really running out of stuff to, to ramble about. I am tired. Yep, you gotta go through. Three turns, one each. I suppose you could do like Ice Sword or something. In fact, oops. Anyway, now that we have Isla thinking further down the road, we can take her to see, to the end of time, to see a Specchio, or however you pronounce his name, and get her magic. That's how you get magic for each new party member. That you run into. I mean, technically she's not a party member yet, but, you know, she will be. You know what? We need to level up here, so let's, uh... And we've got about 20 minutes to go on this, uh, LP here, so let's get this done. Let's, let's do a good old-fashioned ice sword on these motherfuckers. And Napal. Yeah! Do a few hundred? Yeah. I love that. That uh, spell. It's fantastic. It's my favorite. Favorite. See? 96 experience. Can't beat that for only a couple seconds. Same thing here. Let's do Ice Sword. Ice Sword 2 is even cooler. So the faster we get to Ice Sword 2, the better. Actually, Napalm isn't even magic, technically. It's in a wave. Have I even done that in this LP yet? There's no reason to. Yeah, there's no. I guess I'll just do fire. Yeah, these are, uh, kill, kill wallas, as opposed to koalas. Which, by the way, koala, bear, koala bears is a misnomer. They aren't bears. They're like little rodent-type things. I think they are technically in the rodent family, but I just know they're not meant to be considered bears. That's your uh, public service announcement for the day. I'm regretting this. I want to just move on. <laughs> boy, I've made it pretty far so far, though, in this LP. Usually I quit by now. Well, let's just fucking physical attack this guy. I'm sick of this. <sighs> Time for another drink. <sighs> 168. See, that's why you do that. Marl's level is up. Drunk too slow. <laughs> of course I'm slow. Let's go. Dig that uh, music. All right, we have a village here. And we also have a forest maze, which is a big pain in the ass in this game. <laughs> kind of annoying, but what else do we have here? 
We have another Ioka hut. There's the main site. Let's start down here. What's up, buddy? I'm not a reptite. Do I look like a reptite, dumbass? Sure. What do you got? Sweetwater? What is that? Kool-Aid? Was it red or blue or or what? Odd skins. Your face is an odd skin. Chief has, huh? Uh, isn't one of these huts has a tab eventually that I want to keep an eye out for? I'm kind of sure this is the one I was in. Nope, this is the chief one. Let's come back here later. No, that's the chief hut. Duh. <laughs> Called the chief hut. That guy just looks like a chief. Oh, this is the trading guy. Okay, yeah. This is the odd oddball trading system. Hell no. Oh, this guy like just has basic bullshit. Okay. Oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? Okay, whatever. You're the boss. <coughs> There's Isla. Come drunk. Well, you don't have to tell me twice. All right, here we go. <laughs> and now, ironically, that's what we do, is we drink. Yeah, passed down many generations. Didn't freaking Kanye West sample this? Yeah, your regular Kevin Costner dances with wolves, let me tell you. Gotta talk to everybody. It's a compulsion I have. I can't not talk to everybody. It's a sickness. They say the same thing and I don't care. Can I just leave? I don't want to do that. Not a lot of people here. It's a friggin' sausage fest in here. What's up, bro? <laughs> She's over there eating. She's all dancing and stuff. I guess. Yeah, this is pretty cool. She's over there bullshitting with Isla, telling jokes, making fun of me behind my back, even though I'm right here. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, I already talked to you. I'm trying to talk to her. Press Lurgzub to dance. I'll have to look for the Lurgzub. Now repeat. Oops, I pressed A accidentally. The, th the Chrono Fist Pump. It's the only dance move you need right there. See? Chrono knows. <laughs> I'm just gonna do this for like 20 minutes. How's that sound? <laughs> I just spin around like <laughs> Alright, let's get on with our lives. Spoon it up. Chug, 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 chug. Yeah, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Do some more. <laughs> Drinking and screwing around. Alright, let's progress with the story here. Oh, fuck yeah. Azala, very smart. Hmm. Conveniently, Isla speaks English. It's broken English, but it is English. Fuck 
Fuck yeah, I'll challenge you. Uh oh. Oh yeah, you got no chance. I've got turbo on this controller. <laughs> I wonder what happens if you lose. Hey man, modern technology. There we go. And that concludes the prehistoric party portion of our LP. And everybody's hung the fuck over. That's why you don't drink anything. <laughs> that was a perfect lady last night. That's why you don't drink anything over 46%. That's kind of my magic number. If I drink a lot and it's more than 46% alcohol, that's gonna. That's really bad. It's really bad. Stick to 40. That's what most like Jameson and Tullamar do. Like that stuff is mostly 40. Unless you get like some of the higher end like cask mates or whatever. I think they, those might be a bit more, but. Oh boy, I'm tired. Okay, yeah, that's what I want to do right there. Is there a tab in here anywhere? No? <laughs> Quote unquote soup. <laughs> I wonder, can somebody in the comments, can you tell me, is it, does it translate as soup or is it drinks? Um, you know, I have to go with Marl. I know it's boring, but I gotta go with Marl. She's my healer. She's who I want to uh, level up and all that. So, and this is this ends up being my most used party anyway. What do we got going on here? We got footprints everywhere. That's no good. Is there even anything I can do here? Oh, there's something up here, right? Or does that just go up the other side? <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, it goes hot. Uh, we have, I have, you have nothing. All right, all right. Okay, okay, geez. All right, there, thank you. And you say the same bullshit, so. Oh boy, okay, I think we're winding down toward the end here. Uh-oh, they went into the forest maze, eh? That's not a fun dungeon. Kino's gone. Kino was jealous, I think. He seemed like kind of a prickly little bitch last night, so. Hey, I got a tonic. Sure, what the hell. I wish there was something as recover HP MP after a night of drinking. Jesus Christ. Wouldn't that be awesome? Alright, well. Is there a way to get back to... Yeah, I guess I could, huh? I could bring her back to the end of time right now if I wanted to. There's not really any other place I can go at this point. I can go back there. Can I go around this? I'm honestly curious if I can go around here. Mm, nope, I can't. It's gonna cut me off right here. So yeah, you gotta go through the forest maze to get to that cave in the middle. And that is a big pain in the ass. That's kind of a, I don't like that dungeon. It's not fun. The enemies are a little annoying. The right path is annoying. It's not even the right path. It's just making sure you can, you pick up all the items and stuff like that. So, I think I'm going to call this one an episode, and I'll deal with the forest maze uh, later. Is there, wait a second, is there anything above this? Can I go in here? No? What's up here? Let's just aimlessly explore. Dactyl nest. Okay, we won't need that until much later. So, yeah, we're going to meet at the forest maze next time. So, I want to thank you for watching. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Cheers.